seeds are sown in the rock wool cubes in trays that have slits in the bottom. The trays are then set into the uh, nursery table like we see these trays here. There's enough room in the nursery table for seedlings of different ages. So we will have the seeds in cubes where we've just seeded them. We'll have them a week old and we'll have them even two weeks old ready to go into the production system. Most growers will seed about once a week. Then they'll be able to harvest once a week as time goes on. Now as the day length changes, if the grower is not using lights, the sequence will need to be adjusted. As day length gets shorter, production times take a little longer, seedling intervals will need to be adjusted. They will need to be shortened up. In the spring, as the day length gets longer, then the seedling process will need to be lengthened. So in other words, as the plants come on a little faster, the seeding intervals will need to be lengthened. The seedlings will stay in the table about two weeks from the time they're placed there until the time they're moved out into the channels. When they're moved out into the channels, they will be put into the place where plants have been harvested. So we will have in the house about four ages of plants in the channels. Some a week old, some that we've just put in there, some two weeks old, some three weeks old, some four weeks old, and about ready to be harvested. You can think of this as an assembly line. We are starting with the seeding and then nursery process for a couple of weeks, then they go out into the channels. They stay in their place in the channels for about four weeks. In the meantime, another seeding is coming along behind them, another behind that, another behind that. So it's like an assembly process where lettuce comes out the door after a process in the greenhouse. Some growers will seed twice a week because of their preference. That way they only have to seed half as much at a time and only have to harvest half as much at a time. This will depend upon their preference. It'll depend upon the market demands. It'll depend upon the size of the greenhouse. So they will modify the same basic structure to get different results. They may also use different kinds of lettuces. The standard kind that most growers will start with is a bib lettuce. When you get into the leaf lettuces, into the herbs and so on, you'll get different timings between seed and harvest. This will cause adjustments to be made in the seeding and harvesting program as time goes on. Although we're mainly talking about lettuce, many growers diversify into herb production as time goes on. They will start slowly at first. They'll plant a little bit of basil, which is usually the first herb, easiest herb to start marketing. They will devote a few square feet to herb production and then grow as the market grows and may even eventually convert over to mainly or all herb production. This is the media we typically use in lettuce production. Rock wool cubes. The rock wool cubes are about an inch by an inch by an inch and a half tall. They will soak up water well and they will maintain a good air-water relationship so that we can get those young seeds off to a good start. Some growers will use a less expensive LC1 Oasis Cube. That will produce a good result. It does take a little closer management. When it's time to seed, we pull the rock wool cubes out of the box 
and put them into the tray. The tray, again, has holes in the bottom. We'll put the Rockwell cubes into the tray and we'll wet those cubes down before we put the seeds in. We'll wet those down and make sure that we get all the cubes wet down evenly with pH corrected water. We want to wet those cubes thoroughly because any dry spots in the cubes may interfere with the proper water uptake and therefore seed development later on. The cubes soak up the water well. They remain an even dark color when we have finished wetting them down. I like to seed lettuce from a folded 3x5 card. We just take the 3x5 card and fold it like this crease it here, open it up, and then we'll sprinkle the seeds on. Open the seed packet, dump a few seeds out onto the card, and with a pen or pencil or a little ruler or plastic stake, we will push the seeds off the card one at a time into the holes in the Rockwell cube. One, two, three, four, five, six. One seed per hole. Now some growers will seed three and four different cultivars in the same cube. When that is done, we seed the one cultivar for the whole tray. We get new seeds. We seed the next one in the same holes for the whole tray and then get more seeds and seed the next one in each hole, one seed in each hole for the whole tray. The frequency of seeding is about once a week. A grower will seed once a week. The seeds remain in the nursery table here for about two weeks, at which time they will then be transplanted out into the channels in the rest of the greenhouse. Some growers will use pelletized seeds. Some cultivars come pelletized. That's especially for automatic seeders. But if you don't have an automatic seeder, you may still use pelletized seeds. We just have to be a little bit more careful as we dump those out onto the cards. Dump a few of them out onto the card. And again, put them into the holes one at a time. Most growers seed by hand, as we've just seen. Automatic seeders are available. Most growers tell me that when, by the time they set their seeder up and get it working right, they could have seeded what they need to seed each week. A few growers, however, and some of the larger growers do use automatic seeders. We always seed more seeds than we're going to need plants. Not all seeds are going to germinate and grow, and not all the ones that do germinate and grow, grow as fast as the other. Come transplant time, we only want to plant the biggest and the best seedlings. So we will want to have enough seedlings so that we can pick and choose and get only the best. The seedlings in this tray are not developed on the left side. The two rows on the left side 
are not fully developed. They will not be used. Only the right side of the tray will be used. Once you finish seeding, it's time to make a few notes. We need to note the seed lot number and the date of seeding. If there's anything happens down the line, we'll need to know what seed lot number to see whether it might be the problem with the seed. If we don't have that information, we cannot find out anything about the particular lot of seed used. You'll want to record the number of each cultivar seeded, and you'll want to label each tray with the cultivar and the date seeded. This will help when it comes to record keeping in your operation. We'll want the stock seed for no more than six months. So as you order your seeds, you want to know about how many seeds you're going to be using. Order them no more than six months ahead. Lettuce seed, unlike many other seeds, does not have a long shelf life. So we do not want to order too many at one time. Order them ahead. Order them so that you will have them a couple of weeks before you need them and then open the new seeds and seed a few of those seeds along with the seeds that you have. Keep track of the new seeds, where they are. Make sure there's no problem with that lot of seeds. This will help you keep in production continuously. This will help you provide the lettuce that your market will demand. When you have finished using the seeds, close them back up and put them in the food compartment of the refrigerator. That keeps them cool and that prevents thermal dormancy. If we leave these seeds out here in the greenhouse, in the sun, or on the dash of our vehicle, they can get too warm and go into thermal dormancy they will then not grow for quite some period of time. Keeping the seeds in good shape will help keep us in production in the long run. Two to three batches of seeds are going to be on the seedling table at one time. These seeds were sown about 23 hours ago. You can see that the root has just started to grow. In some of these seedlings, the root is about as long as the seed itself. These have been on the seeding table for about a week. These ones, about two weeks. These ones are ready to be transplanted any day now, within the next actual couple of days, for ideal situations. A seedling ready for transplant will have four to five true leaves. If they have fewer than four true leaves, they're a bit young. If they have more than five true leaves, they're a bit too old. Now, once in a while, if you do this long enough, you're going to find that the seedlings get a little old on you. When they get a little old, the leaves will start tangling together. It's going to take you a few minutes longer to separate those seedlings and without damaging them, set them into the channels. You may need to adjust your seeding schedule if this continues to occur. So if you continue to get seedlings that are too old, then we need to slow up the seeding process. Instead of seeding every seven days, you may need to go every eight days. 
If the plants only have two or three true leaves, we don't want to need to transplant them yet. They will occupy production space in the greenhouse that should be occupied by older plants. If we don't have seeds, seedlings ready at the time of transplant, then we are losing production time. Now, if you're just starting and just starting to fill up a section, there's no problem in putting seedlings out there with two to three true leaves on them. They might as well be out there in the production system as sitting on the nursery table. We're after productivity in the greenhouse. We want to keep on a good production schedule. When we need seedlings to fill up our production part of the greenhouse, we want to be able to go to the nursery and get the right age seedlings. Sometimes that's a challenge. Sometimes they will be too young. When those are too young, when they only have two to three leaves on them, we will be putting a plant out there that's going to take longer to be harvested than if it had the four to five true leaves that we want. That's going to cost us production time. That's going to cost us production in the run of a year, as many as one or two crops even. The desirable number of true leaves on a lettuce transplant being planted into the channel is four to five. Now it's time to transplant. We've got the tray on a cart where I can use both hands to do the rest of the operation. We will move the supply line from this channel over to this channel. We'll pull this out so that we can get a hold of the last transplant hole in the channel. I'll reach for a plant, separate it, break the rock wool. We've got a root or two dangling down here, which is okay. These roots will go into the nutrient solution flowing down through the channel. I'll just want to be careful to get that root down into the hole, drop that plant down in there, keeping the cube sitting upright. Then we'll put the next plant in. Same thing, get that root in there, drop the plant down. Next one. Get that root down in there. We want the bottom of the cube to set down on the bottom of the channel. Slide this as we go. Put another plant in. Get those roots down in the bottom. can take